Hello and welcome to episode 39 of Sarp Fever. My name's Frank, and in today's episode I'll be showing you how I repaired the um, first bow ram on the 9.3 convertible for about, uh, I think it was 49p. These hydraulic rams, sad, well, I mean, every, let's face it, everything can fail over time, can't it? But obviously these can fail also. They are a lot brand new. Um, they're about 90 quid second hand here in the UK and sadly, I mean this this is actually a replacement unit, this is not my original, sadly you can buy a replacement and it also might leak as I discovered. There's really, I mean there's two obvious O-rings down here, they're very small and embedded in there, there's one here, one on the uh, RAM itself and one in the back and strangely enough it was the one in the back that failed on both my original and on this replacement. So my original has been fixed already and I will now take you through how to replace this. Now I did do some footage on removing it from the car and putting it back in. After looking at it though I wasn't really happy with the footage I took. So sadly that'll have to wait possibly for another day. So this won't be a video on how to replace the RAM, but how to fix the RAM once you've taken it out. Uh, I need to remove this bit here. Um, it's in two pieces, one comes in this side, one comes in that side, and hopefully we can just about convince it to come out. Now this can be quite brittle as well, sadly. So don't be surprised if you break a few bits off trying. Just be gentle with it. Hopefully, there we go. And you can hopefully you can see that there's some of the fluid on my uh, on my finger there. Now that fluid's not supposed to be there at all. Oops. So let's get this side out as well. Okay, that's that out. Now, sadly, obviously, like many things, this is not designed to be opened. This is a sealed unit. Um, this section here, the circular section here, is part of a large bung that goes in the back. It ends about here with an O-ring on it. It's that O-ring that has failed and is letting the fluid seep past. It then comes out the side here and can also bubble around here. Now, when they make it, uh, they obviously they put that bung in. Uh, this must stick out more because that entire top there is is it's aluminium. This entire unit's aluminium, and it seems to then have been crimped down back onto that bung. Um, it's possible, I think, to perhaps get in there and pick it out, but. We can take a small Dremel or a similar type tool and simply cut this entire um, section off. So, without further ado, Dremel type tool. Where did my safety glasses go? There, I need these for this. I really need them for this. And I might just, just use a little desk clamp to hold it all in place for me. So put it in that way. Maybe there would be best. Okay. Cover your ears, guys. Have a little look at that. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think I've gone past it right. I just need to turn it around. Okay, let's carry on on this end. Is 
that enough? No. No, it's not. For a start, I haven't done very well here. It's all... I think I've done okay there. Not gone deep enough on this side, though. Should, aha! There we go. And as you'll see, now that we've broken it away, actually starting to come off as a ring. No, I've not done enough there. I need to go deeper that side. Nearly there, guys. Nearly there. Hope you saw that. That entire sort of folded over ring has just come away. That's very good news. I can't actually see uh, where the um, outer casing ends and the internal um, uh, that bung begins sadly now the next bit for my next trick i'm gonna to have to mount it in here i will have to take it somewhere else i'm afraid i won't be able to get footage of that not easily anyway um because i'm gonna mount it in this like so and this is ideal for it too because oh, so I actually put it in there properly there because this will hold it for me and it lets that top rail rest against the bottom there and has free access at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is hit this with a hammer. Now this plunger, how it's mounted in here, is obviously it's actually put in from the other side when the bung goes in afterwards. And because of that, to get the bung out, you hit the top of this. Now I should point out that there are two indentations Come on, there's one there's the other now apart from that being folded over the indentations themselves are sort of cramping it in uh, but again it's aluminium it'll flex out the way when we try so give that a swift beating with a hammer and that back end should pop out so I will be back in a moment and we're back right um, that was actually pretty straightforward. Um, I think it only took about three hits. Uh, as you can see, we're starting to push the bung out. Now, hopefully, hopefully this is out enough now that I can actually just... Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, back to the drawing board. I'm going to have to um, put it back in the clamp. I thought, I hoped with it being out this far... I mean, we can start to see the O-ring now. Uh, I hope with it being out this far that I could just pull it from here, but no, I can't. So I'm going to have to go back, put something on there so that I can just hit it with a hammer again, drive it down further to pop that out the back. Back in a mo. Okay, back again. Really got it this time. Let's just sit that down there. This is the plunger. Ordinarily, you'd be used to seeing that in there, and as the car injects and removes fluid, it causes this to simply slide back and forth. And that's really all there is to it. The sort of aluminium bung at the back. Let's have a look at them. For a start, there's that. I think that's just. Yep. Oh, ew. I think that might be the remains. If we get a good look there, hopefully you can see where the O-rings deteriorated. And they simply failed. And that is why all that fluid is coming out. 
Ew. Right. Let's give that a little wipe. Let's give it a plunger a wipe. Now you can see here, it's all these little bits, little burrs of aluminium sticking up. Should just be able to take a little craft knife to them, cut them down. We do not want little bits of aluminium inside it. That could ruin our um, ram again, or worse, if it manages to work its way down the thing, could ruin our pump. So we don't want that happening, do we? There's more than enough remnants of that gunk inside. Some of that's little flecks of aluminium, but uh, some of that gunk that we saw on the... Um, Bung. Right, let's get this cleaned up. Because once we're done with this, we have to play the game of uh, finding a suitable O-ring. What's that? Oh no! <laughs> I thought there was, um, I thought there was something in it there. Just down there. See it? Tip of my fingernail. Yeah, that's that hole. So I was trying to clean that hole away. Right, sit that there. Now, I did some measuring on this when I first did it, and I came to the conclusion that 13mm by 1.5mm O-rings would do, but to be perfectly honest, when they're sat in there, they don't look like uh, they don't look like they're gonna do enough. It looks like you barely raising over the side here. Um, I was concerned that 2mm thickness w might be actually be too thick, like to the point where I would have great difficulty just getting it to go in there because it would be so big and it would be catching here. Um, it's worth noting, get it right, and see that ridge inside it? The ridge is where this sits. Because we sit something like that, so when we're actually in, you can see how deep we are, and uh, that is actually below that ridge. So I was too a little concerned that two mil would be too thick. So I couldn't find anything between 1.5 and two mil, but I did find some imperial stuff, and that's what I've got here. Now this actually works out if memory serves and I will try to put something in the um, try to put a link in the description I believe it works out with 1.7 something mil so thicker than 1.5 but not too thick at least that's my hope anyway and there there's that in hopefully you can see how thick it is see how it is coming out over the edge there um, now don't forget, obviously when it's in there, uh, especially in that ridge, so, which is ever so slightly thinner, uh, that will get pressed down a bit, because uh, I am aware that it doesn't seem to be uh, quite as thick, but I'm hoping it gets squished down. And so far my roof has worked absolutely fine, I mean that that's what I used on the other one, so I'm hoping that will actually finally fix it. So now it's just a case of putting the plunger back in, which itself is tricky because it'll catch and won't actually go down. And as I push it, there we go. And then this can go in. Now, one of the things, it did occur to me fairly early on doing this, um, that bit at the back that we've had to cut off, that was obviously crimped around and was therefore holding it in place. But with that now removed, there's nothing holding it in place. But there is, because this is the mounting hole. So uh, obviously these are in it too. That 
they don't actually provide any real force, but um, maybe my pencil would be a better, yeah, see my pencil would be a better indication that once that's through and through the button, that bung itself isn't actually going to move no matter what the pressure here is because it will be the mounting kind of holder for it that's actually holding it in place. So I don't really know why they went to that much effort. Um, but they did, and so we're stuck with it. Now uh, you can see there the uh, little indentation. But again, that's kind of crimped on. Now this will probably have to be hammered back in, which I'm sorry to say would mean me having to go somewhere else because this really isn't suitable for hammering here. There's a bit of plywood. Yeah, I'm going to need to go hammer this back in, I'm afraid. Back in a mo. Okay, and that's that complete. Um, when I hammered it in, it did go slightly skew if it rotated slightly. Um, if that happens, just get a screwdriver in there and just until it lines up again. Um, I can now put these back in to mount properly. Otherwise, it might flop around without these in. I mean the. Um, not the bung or anything I've done, the actual ram itself might flop around in its mounting. There we go, that's it. Um, that is now one semi reconditioned um, hydraulic ram. I mean, the main reason I say semi is of course that there are other O rings. Uh, there's one up here, there's one on the plunger itself, and there are two small ones, one here and one here. Uh, really, if you're doing this job, you really should just deal with everything while you're here. Um, but I had the, the issue on my one where it was only leaking at the back, and when I sourced this replacement, this replacement was also only leaking on the back. Um, that, which what I, mean, I don't know. Maybe that is a common weak point. You can see here there really isn't much of that original O-ring left. So yeah. Again, although this was what was used, uh, and this particular one. This was the first bow ram. It's worth pointing out, although the general procedure I've shown you is the same on, on all of them, um, there will be different sizes. So just because that size worked on the first bow doesn't mean that size of O-ring is what will fix, say, one of the other ones. So, um, although the procedure is the same, but just bear that in mind. And also, I've only sourced that. I have not sourced that one, that one, or either of those two. But, I digress, um, that is it repaired. The, that is exactly the same procedure I used to repair the one in my car. It's now been in there for a good few days. The roof has been up and down countless times and it hasn't spat any green hydraulic fluid out on me, which is nice, makes a pleasant change. So in conclusion, that is how you can repair the RAM yourself for a matter of pennies. As always, thanks for watching.